Okay, now that we've gotten our basic station design done, I wanted to make a few videos that show you some additional features we can add to our station. And so the first one we're going to take a look at is a passenger waiting system. And the idea behind that is when we have a player in our arrival zone, we don't want to send any additional incoming carts uh, directly to our arrival zone. Otherwise, we'll kind of have people landing on top of each other or just end up with two carts in the system that will probably foul things up. So instead, we're going to divert them to a uh, waiting system that will basically keep people uh, here in the waiting system until our platform is cleared and then send the next person in line back to the platform. So I should point out, uh, if it's not obvious, that uh, this is intended much more for a multiplayer server than a single player server, so just keep that in mind as we sort of move forward from here. But uh, in order to kind of show you what's going on, I will come down here and we can jump in a cart. And so the first person who uh, enters the system, uh, since there's nobody currently on the platform, we'll just skip the waiting system entirely and go directly to the platform. Now rather than allowing my cart to be sent back to the Pez dispenser, I'm just going to pick it up here, which will kind of trick the uh, setup into thinking that there's somebody still on the platform. So the next cart that enters our system, if the platform is occupied, will instead be diverted to our waiting system. So there you go. And they move down to the last position in the system, or the last available position, I should say. And then the next cart that comes in will enter our queue and go to the last available position after that. So uh, then when we clear off our platform, and I'm just going to do that by dropping a card in real quick, we will automatically send in the next person in line and move the person after that down into position. Then when that cart clears the platform, uh, the next person waiting will get sent down as well. So that is kind of the basic idea. Um, and I should point out here that I, uh, as far as the one I currently have built, that is hooked up to the original design I showed in my station with the big loop of track that separates uh, uh, empty carts from occupied carts. And in order to set uh, it up for the original design, we are going to add an RS NOR latch to that. So here's the first detector rail for the RS NOR latch and that detector rail is before we enter the loop and then add uh, another detector rail after we exit the loop but before we get to our PEZ dispenser here. So that is the second uh, detector rail. Now, I, for the sake of time, I'm actually not gonna show you how to build that, uh, but I will have that set up here in my demo world so uh, anyone who wants to see can just come and take a look at that, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. So instead, we're going to uh, show you how to do it with the new design, which has the second cart that you jump into. Uh, now, we don't need to add an additional RS NOR latch to that, because if you recall, we, we already have one built into this system. So we have uh, one detector rail here that uh, flips our RS NOR latch and turns on our passenger detection system, and then a second detector rail after we exit the platform that turns off our passenger detection system. So we can go ahead and just use that RS NOR latch uh, for our redstone wiring. But before we jump into the redstone, uh, the remainder of this video is just going to be kind of about setting things up initially, getting your tracks laid correctly and your ramps uh, where they should be. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So as my track comes in uh, to where we're gonna build our waiting system, uh, rather than running a track directly to our arrival platform, I'm going to branch it off uh, to one side here where we can go and set up our ramps like you see over there. So uh, the normally I kind of stray away from uh, giving you very specific spacing requirements, uh, but I think for purposes of this video, I'm going to kind of break that rule and kind of tell you exactly how many blocks. Uh, now. 
in this case, uh, the first ramp we have here, it doesn't really matter how many rails we have, uh, you know, before we get to this ramp. Uh, it's more the spacing in between the individual ramps. And I should also just point out, uh, before we get to, to building there, that this is certainly not the most compact way of building it. Uh, the reason I'm giving you the spacing is because I've kind of deliberately designed this in a way that should make our redstone much easier to wire up later on and uh, just kind of make the whole concept a little more obvious so if uh, once you build this if you decide it's, it's a little too spaced out for you you can kind of go and play with it or there are sort of alternate designs that do very similar things that are much much more compact than what we've got here so uh, but for purposes of, of the video this tutorial I just wanted to make it uh, as easy as and as straightforward as possible so uh, basically we just have some tracks coming into our first ramp and then powered rails up the ramp. But then after that's kind of when the spacing gets important. So uh, the way I've got this set up is with two powered rails and I decided to use two powered rails. So if somebody exited the waiting system early, uh, an empty cart would have plenty of momentum to get to the next ramp. So two powered rails followed by a normal rail followed by a detector rail and then two normal rails like that. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put a, uh, another powered rail there, but that will lead into our next ramp. So. so the next powered rail like that. And sometimes uh, power tracks can kind of get this little problem here where they don't update correctly. Uh, this simple fix for that is just to drop a torch nearby and it'll kind of force an update so they're all uh, powered correctly. But after that we can just add, uh, kind of repeat the same pattern, so two powered rails, a normal rail, detector rail, two normal rails, powered rail, just like that. And then just build our third ramp here. So on this last one, uh, the spacing, again, is going to be a little different, or not quite as important, but we, we're going to have the same two powered rails, uh, a normal track, and then a detector rail, but rather than kind of continuing the pattern from here, I'm just going to connect this up to our incoming uh, line for our station. So uh, this system is also pretty modular, so I'm using three here because I think it demonstrates the point and uh, to kind of cover our bases as far as what we need to know, but it should be uh, pretty a pretty simple matter to add additional uh, uh, slots beyond three, uh, and you'll kind of get a clearer idea of that when we go into the redstone. But now I'm just going back and adding kind of our floating blocks that uh, the cart will hit and then drop directly down from. So uh, now that we've got our ramps built, we need to go through and run our kind of bypass line that runs directly to the station. And again, this is probably not the most efficient way, but I'm just putting two powered rails whenever we hit a ramp. So I wanted to make sure we had uh, plenty of momentum if we had an empty cart come through our system. So. And I've got this handy mod that lets me set the time. But okay, that should be uh, set up as far as our tracks and our ramp goes. So let's kind of take a look at our area I've dug out here for our redstone wiring. Um, now, as I said earlier, we're going to hook this system directly into the RS Norlatch that controls our passenger detection system for our arrival zone which is this RS Norlatch right here. So above us is the first detector rail uh, for the incoming cart and then the outgoing cart detector rails way over there. But here's our RS Norlatch and we can actually just branch directly off of here. But in order to do that we'll kind of need to dig some sort of tunnel that will run over here to our main redstone area. And then we'll also Looks like I got some incoming weather. We'll also need to dig out a little tunnel uh, so we can run redstone up to 
this track piece right here, which will ultimately swap back and forth depending on whether or not our platform is occupied. And so you can see I certainly have this pretty spaced out. That's a pretty long uh, redstone wire from here all the way up to the arrival zone. But as I say, I kind of am doing that just for the sake of the tutorial. It could certainly be a lot more compact than this. Uh, but once you kind of have this stuff set up, uh, we can get directly into the redstone, which will be the next video. So I'll go ahead and say the redstone can be a little bit complicated. So I would uh, make sure you're pretty comfortable with uh, basic redstone mechanics and specifically our snore latches. They're going to be very important to us. So if you uh, are a little unfamiliar with that, you may want to go and watch my redstone tutorial videos that cover RSNOR latches, but I would be pretty comfortable with that before we kind of move on to the next video.